All right, today we're going to talk about the Equipment Adder app in the Carlton apps. So go ahead and open up your Carlton apps. You see from the fourth down, you'll see Equipment Adder. Go ahead and select it. All right, once it opens up, you'll see that the first thing you need to do is type in your name. Once you type in your name, you'll see that you need to type in your email. Next, you want to select what it is that you are going to be doing. Are you going to be adding equipment, changing equipment, deleting equipment, or something else that you just need to notify about that equipment? For this example, we will be adding a piece of equipment. I like to always type a note in here, just telling them what we're, what we're wanting to do. So adding equipment. First thing you want to do is select the customer name. You'll then want to select the customer's number and type that in here. You'll then want to put in the contract number so that you know which piece of uh, which contract the piece of equipment needs to go on to. You then want to notify the work order number so that we can add it to that work order. Next, you'll want to add the fax equipment number if you know it. That's if you're like replacing a piece of equipment, this is what the equipment number was. Type that in here. If you don't know, just put down that you need, to need one. Next, you want to know the site or the location name or address, especially if the place has multiple locations, uh, multiple addresses. Type in the address. If not, just type in kind of where the scale is going to be located. You want to select what type of scale it is. You'll then want to notify them of any kind of a customer ID number that they might have for this piece of equipment. Next, you want to put down the next maintenance due date. If you're already out on a PM, put down the next maintenance due date that it should be falling on. You then want to put down the frequency of the PM and how often you want this piece of equipment uh, PM. Then put down the specific location of the scale. You then want to put down the manufacturer's uh, manufacturer of the piece of equipment for the for the indicator, as well as the model number and the serial number. Once you get all the serial number and information in there, then you want to select the unit of measure that you will be using on this scale. It then asks you for the base information, uh, if you know the, ma the manufacturer, uh, the model, serial number. This information helps with, especially if you have to look it up for repair parts and stuff, this information comes very handy. You then want to type in the accuracy class of that scale. And you want to select the type of... Uh, check that we were going to be using to, to PM this scale. So CSIS will be for this one, uh, 0.1% per, uh, 0 .1 of the applied load. If there is a customer defined tolerance, this is where you would type that in. Then you want to type in the capacity that the scale is programmed to, as well as the division or the deviation that you want this scale to be put into. Put in your tested capacity, what you're going to be taking the weight up to, and then put down the actual test points that you want for your, for your load test. After you put down your load test points, you, would like, uh, you need to put down your shift test weight and notify how many shift test points you will be performing. If the scale is connected to a PLC, you need to select uh, whether or not you need to verify the weight on the PLC. And then lastly, you want to make sure that you notify whether this is a 17025 scale or not. You can also send a picture of the scale if you'd like, but other than that, that should be everything you need to do. Go ahead and click submit and it'll send off the information to your dispatch. Thanks again for watching and let me know if you have any questions.